making a conference that is going to transport you and translate you into a whole different realm of living, a whole different realm of experiencing the divine life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I congratulate myself on the opportunity to witness this day of the Lord. I don't know if you want to do that for yourself and be like, ah, Lord, I bless you. I thank you for eyes that see. Thank you for ears that hear and a heart full of understanding. I also welcome myself home because this is home. Yes, this is home and I'm excited to be here. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm standing in just the most powerful space that the Lord blesses me to stand. And it is the space of a forerunner, the space of a prophetic voice and a door opener in the spirit to the mighty things that the Lord will do. I still have siblings of, you know, the commonwealth of our, our faith coming to be a great blessing to you. And I know that the Lord is intentional to have sent me um, just to stir you up and charge you so that when you begin to see these things that the Lord has done, you'd be able to receive it with all your heart. And so this meeting is a posturing and a positioning meeting. It's a meeting that will set you in the place that God wants you to stand because where you stand determines what you see. And that is why the prophet said, I will go up and I will stand on my watch and I will wait to hear what the Lord will say to me. Hallelujah. And God is going to cause you to be properly positioned in the name of Jesus so that you will have a vantage point. You would have an angle of perspective, a POV. Hallelujah. Somebody say a POV. Say God is promoting my POV. Is this Holy Hill Church though? Say, God is promoting my POV. God is promoting my POV. Because that's, that's where the miracle is. When we begin to see as God desires for us to see, then we can seize that which he is giving to us uh, to possess as our possession. So, thank God for SOAR Conference 2021. I have been waiting for this day for quite, you know, some months since my very beloved sister, Pastor Chako Ogidibo, um, made me the invitation and I was just counting down. And this day of the Lord has come. Hallelujah. Allow me to celebrate the stewards and pastors who minister over us in this house and who hold the hands of my beloved siblings in the work of the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please celebrate Pastor Johnson Olubuenro. Do it like you really honor, honor God's vessels. Please celebrate Pastor Samson Opole. Do it very well. Please celebrate Pastor Harrison Ed. Celebrate, celebrate Pastor Biola Folonsho. Hallelujah. Please celebrate Pastor Ella Please. Hallelujah. Celebrate Pastor Ohi Ayeni. Do it very, 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 very well. Celebrate Pastor Jane Ohiagame. Celebrate her. Hallelujah. Celebrate Pastor Tunde David. Hallelujah. Celebrate Pastor Ada Shokon. Give God praise for Pastor Tosin Shokon. Can you go up with a louder shout? Hallelujah. I don't mind if you rise to honor the leadership, the blessing, the ministry, the gift that we have. And my siblings, stewards over God's house, the angels set over Holy Hill Church globally, Pastor Sunday and Chaka Ogidugo. Can we do it better unto the Lord? When the Lord loves a people, he places shepherds after his heart, you know, over them. God bless you. Can you celebrate yourselves? Can you give Jesus praise for the destiny on your inside? Is that how you're going to do it? Hallelujah to God. Amen. What a spirited people you are. Please be seated in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. This is like full circle for me. It's full circle. 
you know, this is such a, it's symbolic on a very personal level. It's not just um, an opportunity to do what I've been ordained, anointed, empowered, and graced for, you know, to spread the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus Christ across the nations of the earth and to edify, strengthen, and empower the body of Christ so that we can rise into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. But this is extra special because um, I first met Pastor Sunday, who we call Peace on, October of 2001 in Obafemi Ewolo University. And meeting him, becoming a part of the, what do you call it? Was it the Fortune Club? Fortune's Club. Uh -uh, I didn't do bad. <laughs> Fortune's Club International, yes. And then being mentored, instructed, encouraged, taught by him definitely shaped not just my, you know, my time on campus, but sharpened my recognition and preparation as a ministry gift. You know, and he used to say a lot of crazy things then that I still think are crazy. Had all these grand visions about the things that I will do, where I will go. I would have this printing press, how my books would be translated in hundreds of languages. I'd be like, huh? Why so deep, though? <laughs> I just want to, you know, become a professional career woman, top of my profession, travel the world, speak at the United Nations, and yeah, you know, marry a very wealthy medical doctor, live in the UK. <laughs> and have um, my masseuse come every week, have my nails painted, just the fine things of life. And God was looking at me in 22D. At that time, <laughs> you know, but I truly want to celebrate and honor that prophetic edge that caused you to see right into God's heart, into that future. And I want to thank you for just stewarding the graces that was on my inside, you know, as a brother, as a mentor, as a friend, as a pastor, and even as my academic expo giver, because he was, we were in the same department. So every new session, oh yeah, Bola, this is part three. This is what to expect. Pay attention. Don't stress about this lecturer. Stress about this lecturer. This one is four units. Pay attention. Don't, yeah. And it even shaped how I became, you know, a part-time uh, part student and a full-time minister. You know, I was full-time in ministry, but I was still top of my class because of the expo of the Egmo that had gone ahead of me. <laughs> Please celebrate Pastor Sunday Giribo. We call him Peace Son, and he's so special, so beloved. And God knew that, uh, you know, for Peace Son to thrive, he needed a certain type. A certain type, you see, because there are women and they're women. You get, mm, Selah. <laughs> Amen. You know, and every time that I think about him and think about Pastor Chako, you know, there's just that recognition that God found a perfect vessel for the mission in his heart, you know, and that he gave to Pastor Sunday. Pastor Chako is just such a woman, virtuous. I mean, how do you have four children and you're hot like this? Can you guys explain it to me? I'm, I am asking. What are you even telling me? Amen. And if you think this is not part of Saul, you're wrong. This is Saul. Because there are things that are taught and there are things that are caught. And the reason God places us in families and the reason he sets us in catalytic divine communities is because there are some things that we just have to be around till they start to smell on our skins. Hallelujah. And if you're a member of this house or your spiritual, you know, son or daughter to this amazing couple, you're truly blessed. And I pray that we will not just be in a place, but we will be positioned where God has placed us so that what he has in his heart will come to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I came with a, a ministry director and my very beloved EA today. Please help me celebrate Director Tutu Adelaja and Mrs. O. Do it better. Please help me celebrate them. They helped me do the work of ministry. And I truly love you very dearly. And I celebrate every of our own family members, uh, Kingdom Women Global Alliance, who made it here today. I saw a few. I love you and I'm proud of you. God bless you in Jesus' name. 
Genesis chapter 1. Scripture says to us, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. And he goes on to talk about how God declared the firmament to be from out of the midst of the waters, and how he divided the waters and separated the firmament above and below, and how God caused the waters under the heaven to be gathered together in one place so that dry land could appear, how God led the earth, declared to the earth to bring forth grass, the harp that yields seed, the fruit that uh, the fruit, the tree that yields fruit according to its kind, and on and on, and he caused light to separate day and from night and for signs and seasons, days and years, and how God declared the waters to abound in abundance for living creatures and how he created the creatures. And you know Genesis 1. And scripture says in verse 28, verse, from verse 27, God created man in his image, in his own um, in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. And in verse 31, scripture says, God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And I believe that this, even though this is such a known, beloved scripture, that the Holy Spirit is going to brood so powerfully over every single word that it causes me to declare over you today and to declare to you. And the words of the Spirit of God will come alive. The scriptures will come alive. And what he has said to me as I prayed for you is that there will be blueprints out of the contractions of the, wombs of, the, of the womb of the spirit. And you will be giving answers, timeless technologies and supernatural softwares that will help you find a roadmap through the emerging seasons that are opening up this decade because this is a decade of destiny. God is going to be handing you secrets strategies and solutions. God is going to be teaching you how to soar. God is going to be teaching you how to wait on him. Scripture says in Isaiah, have you not heard, have you not known that the everlasting God, the Lord, is the maker of the ends of the earth? He neither faints nor is weary, and there's no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. He says, the young men shall fail and the youth shall utterly fall. But those of us who wait on the Lord, we will mount up with wings as eagles. We will run and we will not be weary. We will walk and we will not faint. Those of us who wait on the Lord, will mount up with wings, will soar on the wings of eagles. Amen. That's your destiny. You were designed to soar. It is at the heart of your divine DNA, at the heart of your wiring to win. You were wired to win. You were destined for dominion. You were created to thrive, to prosper. Amen. That is what comes with being a child of God, with being made in the image of God after his likeness. After he created you, he blessed you. You see that in your scripture, isn't it? Genesis 1:28. God blessed them. He created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. 
He said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Be fruitful. Multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion. He gave you a mandate of the blessed life. Amen. But why is every saint not thriving? Why is every son not prospering? Why is everyone made in his image after his likeness, seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, the one unto whom he has given all dominion, all authority, that is in Christ Jesus to be exerted by the saint on the earth? Why do we have all of this kingdom infrastructure? Why have we been blessed with every blessing, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and we're not thriving. Why have we been giving everything that pertains unto life and godliness and we're not thriving? Why is there a mandate? God's mandate is not a suggestion and is not an emotional motivation. He blessed them. You know, we have maybe a cultural estimation of the blessing. We think about the art and the act of blessing as a benevolence bestowed onto a person because they are favored, preferred, and liked by the benefactor. Does that sound like what comes to your mind? Bless me. Is that correct? Don't you think about it sometimes that way? You say, you've really blessed me. And when, God's, when you think about God's favor, you're, you're primarily thinking about the way that a man handpicks a woman from the crowd of many women and chooses to pour his love on her. So when people are like, you're favored, you really feel like you're special. And you, you, you sometimes even when you're worshiping, you'll be like, I don't know why. I don't deserve it, but you love me. I'm just so blessed. And that's a dimension. That's great. But you see, the mandate of the blessing is not merely a bestowment of benevolence because the benefactor likes you. It is a mandate to be enthroned into an office and an ordination without which the kingdom agenda cannot be perpetuated. Every time that you don't stand where you have been placed and enforce the authority that comes with your positioning, you are doing a disservice to the kingdom of God. And every time we are not gaining grounds, we are simultaneously losing grounds. Hallelujah. Think about battle line drawn. If you are not edging into the territory of the enemy, it means he is encroaching into your territory. And every time saints are not enforcing the dominion mandate on the earth, people suffer. Institutions suffer. Communities suffer. Nations suffer. Destinies suffer. The agenda suffers. I don't know why God did it. But I know that as, as I said, the agenda suffers. There's a part of you that will think, God's work, it will be done. That's inaccurate scripturally. It will be done, it's the work of the Lord. Whether man cooperates or not, it will be done, it's inaccurate. And why are we finding that there is an uneven distribution of ordinations and mandates and responsibilities on some saints because others are dropping the ball? There are many sons who are carrying burdens that were not initially assigned to them. Reality. Because when you say you want to partner with God, and I'm going somewhere. It's without bios or profiles or vision boards and recitations. It's because of our social construct. It's because of our own social construct. We sometimes need a bio. But God don't care for your bios. You are a son. You can be redeployed. You don't even know where you're headed. Uh, you, you know, he can speak to you 10 years ago and show you, this is what I want to do with you. 
As the urgency demands, he can say, we're off to Iran because there's a pressing need. The ones that I sent there, they have gone to Canada and they're eating shawarma. <laughs> but an army is rising. An army is rising. And what I have released my faith for is that every single person who will hear me tonight and who will hear me after, whenever they watch the replay, many years after, holy emotions will be awakened in your heart. You'll be restless till you soar into destiny. And let us uh, put out the disclaimers early enough. We've got a furniture company waiting outside to pack the tables if they will be able to use it because we're about to break them. If you came here perceiving that soaring means you will move into that gated estate, buy that new car, get that visa, those contracts, the promotions, the baby you're waiting for, greater intimacy in your marriage, they're about to ram into you and break your side mirror. Anytime we situate what God can do within the context of our selfish needs, we weaken the capacity of God to reach a generation. Are the houses, the cars, the visas, the intimacy, the twins, are they part of the deal? They are, but they are the lower end of the deal. How can we raise a generation that is fixated on, 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 the, on the small detail. How do I describe this? Help me, Lord. How, how can we be a people who set our corporate vision and goal, even within the church, on what God can give more than who we can become as he walks with us? How can this be okay? How can we have testimonies that span 40 minutes in church Nobody stands to say, I've never prayed in five hours, but I started this quarter. Back to back, 30 days, I've prayed five hours. I set a goal this year of a thousand souls, directly won, and a million souls through media. The Lord is helping me. How, how do we look upon people because they got a job in an oil servicing company, and you say, I just covered the grace of God on your life. Was this the faith that was handed to us? You look at them and you begin to say, God, when am I a stepchild? You know, some things, we catch it on social media. And we have to lose them because the kingdom is a civilization. And civilizations have their language, their literature, their culture, even their feeding system. That's not where I'm going. That's, by the way, of just a, a, a mild introduction. Hallelujah. Amen in Jesus' name. So, if we are soaring, where people waiting on the Lord, carried on the wings of the Spirit, manifesting Zoe on the earth realm, restraining the force of evil, taking territories, there were sins in previous dispensations. Unto whom territories were named in the spirit. You understand? As they are deploying demonic hosts, when a demon is deployed to a territory, fellow demons will be saying, what? Ah, wow. I wish you were low. That's Kenneth Higgins GP, GPS. Hey? Reinforcements and backup. And they still run out of those territories with their tail within you know, their, their thighs, out. You remember Kenneth Hagin just having, you know, uh, a great time resting after lengthy hours of prayers. So he slept off, reclined on the chair, and he just saw a demon uh, come in. And he saw this monkey right physically in the room. You know, and he just smiled, and he, he was so irritated. He was just so irritated. Out! Get out! You know, but some people sleep with three versions of translations of the Bible because they are being chased in their sleep. 
This thing that you think is, is okay, this normalizing of crutches, it ends in the name of Jesus. So to soar is to be carried on the wings of the Spirit. For your vision to be carried on the waves of angelic media. For your assignment to be carried on the wings of consecration. For you to enter through doors that have been opened by Yah, the everlasting one. For you to negotiate the destinies of nations because you are placed and positioned as a voice in your generation. For you to win in intercession before you stand before kings and begin to negotiate political outcomes, systemic outcomes, institutional outcomes, financial outcomes. For you to be so strong a priest that you know how to convert spiritual endowments into executive expressions. You know, you stand, you're making the presentation in the boardroom, and you're talking backward integration and constructive frameworks and analyt ana analytical methodologies. And you're sounding bright and smart in your power suit, but you know, under the basis, in grass, or coparia for dusha, eleko keva. You step into the room, you see occultic activity. Under your breath, communication is going on. Lebre kufres ila baruste. Men do kias of freketo be warned. I ram into you, you die. Underneath. But, but we, want to, we want to do the external. And it, it, this is not our civilization. This is not how we are wired. You want to promote the social media post and do the webinars as lead magnets to chat to barrier freketel and us. Is this how we are going to do it? You pay the consultant to brainstorm when the Holy Ghost, ah, Soteba, and the extraordinary strategies. I'm a consultant, I get paid. So I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying place priority where priority is due, so that when you come out of the secret place, timeless strategies, timeless technologies, supernatural softwares, blueprints and master plans, the portals are open. The heavenly portals are open. God wants to do with our generation what will achieve for heaven the highest impact in the shortest possible time. Help me reason out. You know, don't rush over that line. Think about what it looks like if God, in the time that we have, says, I am going to rush your generation. Because we are actually the finishing generation. And Genesis 1 the Lord has said to me to show you a few things from here, which he has called the protocols of new beginnings. The protocols of new beginnings. If we are going to begin to soar, it means that there will be a change of altitude. Is that correct? There will be a change of altitude. If you set aside the matrix, because let me tell you the biggest problem with the social matrix um, you have a false estimation of where you really are in life. It's, it's, it's a type of darkness that appears like light. And it is it's extremely dangerous because it is a tool of deception against the soul of the saints. What am I saying? If you don't have the parameters clearly set about what it looks like, to what it looks like to the saint to succeed. If you don't have very clear, scripturally grounded parameters for what true success looks like, you are going to recline to the damning culture of the day. And you will begin a pursuit into nothingness. And as you acquire 
these plastics and panda, you know panda, you know costume jewelry. As you acquire the plastics and the scraps and the costume jewelries, you, you are going to experience a false sense of progress and success. Amen. And that is where the danger is. But if the Lord begins to open our eyes again, and it's a work that you must devote yourself to intentionally, humbly seeking the Lord, pursuing his heart, his holiness, and looking unto him to hand you a blueprint. Because true success is the progressive accomplishment of God's plans for your life. It's the progressive accomplishment of God's plans for your life. Now, let me balance it. Because I know that I stay on this side a lot. You know, the Lord is helping me be more, uh, I'm, I'm a core prophet. So, you know, but I'm, I am leaning to this side. So let me balance it, right? You are going to be so stupendously wealthy with God that there is no currency that can refuse you. So I'm not, I'm not trying to win you over onto a life where you are beggarly. In case it's sounding like that, apologies. I serve an elegant God. I serve, you know, the God class is the classiest that liveth. Like, classiest ever liveth. God, the, you know, God, God class is, is exquisite in dimensions of elegance. Stupendous in wealth. Colorful in prosperity. It is good to roll with God. You know, he'll clean you up that there is no way and there is no context you will be set that you have to hide your face. Please, let's, let's, let's establish some things here. Amen. The glory will be dripping. Are you getting me right now? I know you like that one. Ah, God knows how to honor his sons. He does. He does. But he loves to place the weight of glory and prosperity on sons because the prosperity of fools destroy them. Mm. There are things that are unsafe to be placed in the hands of a babe. Amen. People are doing this online, online church, virtual church. Because you woke up at 8, 8.30, you just, you just convert it. That I, I just feel led that I should just... Uh, just be in the lost presence from home. Just create an architecture of quietness in the lost presence. When pastor calls you, you have the nice sounding Christianese. That I, I just want to lean in some more. I've been hearing some things around church people and I'm like, ah, ah. I, I just want to lean in. I want to step back because of the kind of seizing uh, that I'm in. <laughs> hey, God do. So because I don't know much, it's just... The wisdom of the Lord that is ordering my life. I'm not that smart, naturally. I don't know if you get me. So I have to just humble myself that guide me. Uh, brethren, show me this way. <laughs> that, you know, and it's almost like I'm just a bad thing. Like, just stepping back and leaning in. That's how people lean into Netflix. They are leaning in. Nonsense. I just want to step back and just uh, sort of press in. Pressing that cuts everybody out. You know, that scripture that says, and you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Don't turn to the left and to the right. Who do you think is the voice there? Anyone ever read it? Who is the voice? Tell me if you caught it. It's your teacher. Go back to that scripture. Not the Holy Spirit. Go back to that scripture. Or you can put it up for us. It talks about giving you teachers after the Lord's heart. And it's from after that point of leaning into your teachers, you hear a voice behind you. Amen. You cut out from teachers, cut out from mentors, cut out from father. I feel like there was a way he spoke when he was teaching. And I felt like that was because he was privy 
to like some private information about me. I feel like he was preaching is your insecurity that he's speaking. And you can plot the graph. When people, when people just say these kind of things to me, I will just take a pencil. I'll write number one. I'll write the person's name. They will tell me a bit more. And this person really hurt me. I'll say, what's the name? They are, um, I will now see maybe like six. I would have written number one to six and names, right? And then I would draw the line and draw the line. Then I will say, this is a pattern. A pattern is a repeated experience that is connected by a common denominator. I'll say this connected line. Who, what is the denominator? In all this story, what remained constant? Then they'll start to tell me that people hurt me. No. That I wasn't receiving love. No. It is you. You are the common denominator across these stories. When you want to understand a pattern, explore the common denominator. Selah. I come in peace. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to show you this protocol. Because if we catch it and we shift in altitude, or this is the way to put it, if we catch it today and we will, we will know how to shift in altitude. Why is this teaching today very important for you? Because we often think that God holds the absolute responsibility to propel us into a new level. Is that correct? So we often pray about new levels, new seasons, new doors. We often pray about performance of divine promise and manifestations of the miraculous. But any saint that is going to be able to unlock divine potential and perpetuate a divine seed on their inside, i.e. manifest on the earth realm. What has your name on it in the heavenlies? We must be taught and we must take the protocols, the principles and the practices, practices of God as keys to unlock new seasons. And now that the Lord has announced a soaring season to us. Now that the Lord has opened us up into a shift that can bring you into spaces and places in your life and experience that you've never been but has always been ordained for you. The Lord has asked me to share with you protocols of unlocking new beginnings. And we've got God as the key character here in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created in the beginning. He unlocked a new beginning. He birthed what previously didn't exist. He created from scratch and produced an entity, produced an outcome, produced on the, uh, both the heavens and the earth as divine architectures, i.e. materializing out from the mind of the spirit, the mind of God, his intention, and it was seen physically. Hallelujah. That's what it looks like to soar, to move from wherever you are, whatever that level is, and to shift in altitude to a new realm of life. You see, because we live in realms, we live in realms, how do I say that to you? At every new realm are new possibilities that are accessible because of that realm. Hal, is that correct? You see, until you become an ambassador, you don't understand the ambassadorial realm, for example. There are things that come with that office. There are the kinds of relationships, conversations, opportunities, benefits, protocols, ethics and ethics and etiquettes. Amen. Is that correct? It's a realm. And the thing about realms is we are outsiders to realms we are not within. 
That's why, yeah, this is so serious. I am telling you, and I don't want to, I don't want to make it testimony night, so I will keep it core teaching. But I'm getting it now. Some things are happening now in my life, and I'm like, <laughs> are you joking? So this is what people have been, ah, ah, most time, most time. Honestly, I'm, I'm beyond astonished about dimensions of incredible favor. <laughs> if you're not sitting on a board, you don't understand that realm. And there are things happening there. How am I speaking on a Zoom call? The same thing. I'm not even shouting like I'm shouting and sweating. I'm just speaking the same things. I'll be sharing my husband. And he'll be like, oh, bright, bright, bright. Oh, I have said again and again to people about what can change the African continent, you know, policies that we should, you know, how we should rethink policy. And I'm sitting on boards of international nonprofits. I'm sitting on, you know, policy advisory committees in African countries. And I'm saying the same thing. Everybody's going, wow, wow, wow. Then you will just hear, popo, popo. <laughs> I'll be like, go, what's? Hello, brethren, please. <laughs> and you know, a lot is just like the same, DDK, please, I need you to pray for me. There's a lot going in my life. It's the same type of text. Your phone doesn't break when thousands of dollars drop. It doesn't, it's just popo. You are the one that knows. You're just like, glory to God. <laughs> It's between you and the law. You are having that more like that. It let him change. <laughs> Amen. You see, hallelujah. Realms, 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 realms. Things that come with realms. We live in realms. So when God talks to you about a shift, it's a change in altitude. And that's how it draws you into a different realm. You see, going into the DMs and saying, I want you to mentor me, is because you still don't understand this thing we're saying. Because in realms, your fragrance begins to travel far. Yeah. So what you qualify for, the relationships at that realm gravitate toward you. It's just the law of the spirit. So you are gliding, you are riding a wave of a realm. You know, they teach us networking, isn't it? Print, you get a lot of cards. You print your car, you hold it along. Then you position yourself, you sit in front so that the speaker can see you. Then you make sure you ask a question. Sir, that was a great presentation there. I have been following you for two years and my life is not, you will see all these big things. And, and, and my major contribution, my contribution right now is that the redemic melody within which this presentation, which is a visionary eloquation, Whereby you will say everything, then you will jump after the guy after, sir, it's been a blessed meeting, sir, a high do, a furnishing, you, you give him the card. The card is not getting into the car with him. Say, Father, open me into the next realm of destiny. Father, open me into the next realm of destiny. Hand me protocols. Precious Holy Spirit, teach me to steward the protocols that unlock my next season. In the name of Jesus, I will no longer circle mountains. I will no longer repeat seasons. Father, wisdom, counsel, secrets, solutions, strategies, revelation, insights, ideas, inspiration. Concepts and conceptions. They enter into my heart. As I hear your servant today, I receive my specific instructions. In the name of Jesus. Yes, it is done unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Opportunities are giving. But a chance is taking. Right? Shifts are prophesied. But seasons must be entered. Or else you're going to wonder why a hand's been laid. Why is oil being poured? But why does it feel like I know this place is too familiar? Why do I smell of this place? Because I've been there for so long. 
And it's wisdom, it's wisdom that unlocks doors. And that's what the Lord is going to do for you today. You will hear specific instructions. Tell me if you've ever been in, a, in, an ex, in this experience where God just puts a nudge in your heart to call a person. And you can remember vividly that that call opened multiple doors in your life. It's, 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 it's too much for the human mind, honestly. Because he knows the path he should take. And that's what the enemy is fighting. He's making us blinded by deadlines to always be on the go. And we are becoming a generation that doesn't know the habitual practice of the Lord's presence. There's no way to win without being with the one you love. There's no way. And that's what the enemy is fighting. You jump up, boom. And even, have you noticed, until you really deal with that place of carnal pressure for work, you will be in the Lord's presence and the deadlines and the timelines and the deliverables will be running through your mind. Am I correct? Sometimes you feel him calling you to stay longer, but you're just like, ha, ah, Lord, I love you, but, but I, I got to go. I honor you so much. Then, then you try to spiritualize it all through the trip. In Baragados, Mandele, Bero, Sabaha, you will switch Sinash just for, you know, a, a atmospheric effect. Mendoza, so it's just playing under. I worship you, yes, Lord. And, and even angels are just like, ah. What is man that thou are mindful of him? Because this kind of nonsense, we dare not. Who born angel? Born, I, I love you, Lord, but I got to go. They are swift at the word of his command. And he will reteach us again. In the name of Jesus. It said the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the waters. And you are going to see three things here standing in the way of a new beginning. Three dimensions that are constantly being experienced in the life, the work, the marriage of the saints experienced in communities and societies and institutions and nations. In fact, this thing is so profound to me that the Lord showed me like the institutional template of, of these uh, protocols that I'd love to share with you. And I'm currently using it as frameworks for my one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's that powerful. He was confronted with the obstacles, the oppositions that are set within lives today and hold us back from really experiencing a new beginning. This, this, this conference has costed money. It has costed intercession. It has costed effort, time, sacrifice, a labor of love. God didn't bring us here so that we go back and be the same again. And as I go into the rest of tonight, I want you to posture well. You know, do this with a sibling beside you and say, posture well. Posture well. Do it while I drink water. Say, posture well. I can't hear you. Amen. Let's go. Three obstacles that the Lord showed me stand in the way of pressing into new beginnings. Darkness, the earth was without form, it was formless, and it was void, empty, and there was darkness on the face of the deep. Amen. There was darkness, formlessness, and there was emptiness. The enemy 
isn't going to let you go easily. You see, the disservice that a word of faith believer can unconsciously create in their lives is they are so vested in the revelation of their placement that they discount the devices and the designs of Satan. And it's just like, no, no, no devil can come near me. I'm seated in heavenly places. You are seated in heavenly places because it is a realm that you must steward. If you don't know how to be seated in heavenly places, the thing that, you know, scripture was describing in Ecclesiastes is happening to saints. How princes are walking on bare foot. Amen. So there is a stewarding of the life that we have been given. There's a way to be. It's a civilization. Hallelujah. The covenant has terms and conditions. And it was to you that scripture was saying, do not be unaware of the devices of the enemy. Do not be unaware of the schemes of the enemy. Amen. And that's why he said the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ and having a readiness to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So when we come to meetings like this, God is undressing problematic paradigms. He's undressing mindsets and mental strongholds, subconscious conditioning that make us move from kingdom into church, that make us move from spirituality into religion. So he's not going to let you off just like that. I'm going to show you something in Isaiah 43. And from then on, I will come back to Genesis 1. I really trust the Lord that his, his light will dawn on our hearts tonight. You're going to soar. You're going to come into 2021 and this decade fully kitted. And you're not going to let your armory down. You are going to stand on your watch till you see the manifestations of the prophecies that are hanging over you. Oh, wow. It's about to rain down. And you know the beautiful thing about when new seasons open up, when new beginnings are birthed, what is for the earth is for the earth. God has no business with what he has allocated that has been given, declared, stamp sealed, and delivered in the budgetary allocation that belongs to you from the economy of heaven. And so when you wake up, they will rush you. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. The things that were allocated even to previous seasons, they will rush you. Amen. Some of the things that will look like miracles to you. The angels will just be smiling like, uh, something that since 2009. But that time, you were dating club boys. So <laughs> that's... Selah, Selah. Amen. He's coming for you. What the enemy has taken, what the canker worms have eaten, what, you know, disloyal alliances, unfruitful patterns, small mindsets, and an inability to sustain an ordination, the things that they have tried to take from you, you would be rewarded in multiple folds because your God is causing you to soar on the wings of the spirit. And when you lay hold on these principles, this counsel, this truth, you're not going to let them go. Look at what he said. He said, Isaiah 43, verse 16, uh, verse 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. I will author a new beginning. I will install you as a king and I will enthrone you on your throne. I will do a new beginning 
You are no longer going to be a king in waiting. You will be enthroned. I will place you where I see you. Hallelujah. He said, I will activate a new beginning. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And in Isaiah 42, verse 9, it says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and the new beginnings, I declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. What I'm seeking to highlight to you in this moment is that new beginnings usually spring forth. New beginnings spring forth, right? Scripture describes it at, or, or other trans, uh, translations call it a springing up, a sprouting out. Amen. And descriptions for springing forth says it leaps out. It rushes out. It jumps upward and forward suddenly and quickly. Why is this critical for you? Stay in the design of God. Holy Spirit, help me. The design of God is for the saint to be on a permanent spiritual progression. The path of the just is a path that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Whenever you are circling mountains, whenever you are repeating seasons, whenever things are not shifting and moving, whenever you are not experiencing the manifest dimensions of the prophecies and promises you've received, whenever you feel like things are stalling, know that this is not the natural progression of the Son of God. And it immediately shows you that there's something in the system that is withholding your next level. Amen. If you disbelieve this, you are acting as a babe. Amen. That thing is not necessarily a person. Many times, it is a thinking and the enemy is happy for us to be loyal to nonsensical perspectives. He is happy for us to be gradually inundated, massaged, and, and what's the word? Carry a conviction about the ideologies of the word that stand against the word of God. He knows that whenever you accommodate within the realms of your heart and your mind, the thoughts that may make sense and are repeated long enough by culture till you begin to hold them as truth unconsciously. He knows that when that happens, what you get, eh? And so you're still going to be Baruse, Embrega Delegado, Marcos, Ombarusta. You're still going to be leading worship, right? Even confessing. Maybe you have kingdom of words, hallelujah. Or you have exponential decade. And you listen to it in the morning. And you're charged. I believe if it doesn't enter your mind, it can't enter your life. That is why new beginnings spring forth. It takes the exhaling of the wind of the spirit to propel you out of a current level. Who is ready for that? Who is believing for that? That there's counsel coming to me today and as I steward and walk in it, that wisdom as I perpetuated and sow the seed in my life and course correct, I love how Pastor Chaco said it. That is the accumulation of daily alignment. Say, I'm aligned. I'm recalibrated in the name of Jesus. Why have I said all this to you? Just one core line of truth. That new beginnings spring forth. They emerge forcefully. They break past limits and limitations. 
to happen in your life. However, I need you not to think about this springing forth merely as a prophetic push, but a partnership in scriptures. A scriptural partnership. Meaning that when a prophetic push comes like it will today, it must meet the twin sibling of obedience to instructions. This singular factor, my beloved, if this is the thing you don't forget it to change your life. I'm telling you that I've entered into seasons actively from 2018, again and again, marked shifts, marked shifts. And what has changed in my life very actively is actually not more prayer. It is more leaning to the heart of the Father and running with alacrity, with alacrity, whatever he puts in my hands. Whenever I discern it, Tobati Bosimilowa, Ako Peliando Bregado, Tobale Bosimil, eh, Soku Bariandos. And that in English means if he can Bosilowa, Soke Balamahande. I don't care your language, say Oti Bosimilowa. I really can't hear you, Oti Bosimilowa. I want to hear you louder, Oti Bosimilowa. If I don't do that, how will you know DDK came to Holy Hill Church? Hallelujah. If it lands in your hands, you'll unburn it. This is how you are. You sell the entire properties that you have to buy that field. You are like, I don't get them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paro Kobaha. This is how you, you cut a lambanoid. Medo Sebaha. If you begin to do this, things will be happening in your life that you didn't pray about. Ah, yeah. oh, Holy Spirit, let conviction rest. I'm telling you, if what you're experiencing is directly proportional to what you're confessing, you are in a realm. Another one is still coming. In the name of Jesus. Because prophetic instructions unlock a chain of reactions. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like when you do high interval, a high intensity interval training. After you stop gymming, you're still burning calories. Amen. You're still burning calories. Your body is still working. Your muscles are still burning. Pro obeying prophetic instructions, your own, that you were giving. And that's why you come to church. You don't just come to church because Pastor Pison is a great teacher of the word. You come because it's just one word. When you, when you are postured, you just have to hear one word. You're like, okay, yeah, that's it. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. You see some people behaving crazy in church. You'd be like, ah. It's over exaggeration. It worries me a lot because it's distracting for others. Before they distract you, distract them. Hey! Hey! Hey, hey! We must be shouting like that because when light hits you, you know, the baby in your womb will leap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Ah! Because now you know what thing they do you. You know, when you get the title deed. Well, stop, stop. I, will, I don't want to be, you know, I want to put it together, but it's not putting together. Because you are the one that knows. Ah! Eledoka baravazashte. Shorty. Oti. I'm liking the people that are like Catalambano. You know, letting it go. You release your faith for that tonight. Throughout this conference, he will speak to your heart. Your word will come to you. And when it comes to you, you're going to run with it. Look at that. New beginnings spring forth. They spring forth. How do they spring forth? 
what should we begin to put into our lives and this season? How should we approach this season that really causes us to see the activations of new beginnings? When God created the heavens and the earth first in the realm of his mind, in the realm of his heart, he was clear what he wanted to see. And when he stepped into that moment conceptually to birth what was in his heart, scripture said there was darkness, there was emptiness, and there was formlessness. And many of us have this situations and experiences going on in our lives. And every time any of these dimensions operate in the life of a saint, those are the forces that make soaring difficult. These are three forces that make new beginnings difficult. Darkness, the absence of God's paradigm. Emptiness, the absence of God's presence. Formlessness, the absence of God's purpose. Darkness, when you think about darkness, stop thinking about merely witchcraft and spiritual wickedness in the terms of a bat that perches on the window or comes from nowhere. A black bat from nowhere. Or a black cat. That one is even more believable. I can see a sister, she's still afraid, as I said. Uh, that that's no joke. Because, because we're in present, let's respect uh, every time his level. Someone has said that to me before. <laughs> Came for counseling. I was saying, I stop that nonsense. After she said, there are forces, demonic forces, that people die. Ah, that she's there like this. You know, she was even almost looking back. I said, stop that nonsense. In the name of Jesus. The babe looked at me, eh? almost fearing from my life. She said, ah, that please, let's be patient to that. Every... <laughs> that, ah, no, it's not about shouting or vibrating, no, that. Ah, man, no, I'm not joking, no. That even the last person that died, it was an evangelist, I get <laughs> Stop, oh, you are young, you get. Don't go and be thinking, yeah, but it's not about, you get. <laughs> stop it in the name of Jesus. What is that? She said, ah, stop. Ah, wait, ma. <laughs> it's more like saying, eh, kaida. <laughs> Amen. What you're afraid of is afraid of you. You will see yourself in the name of Jesus. Do you know who your dad is? So stop thinking about darkness that way. Darkness is the absence of God's paradigm. When Jesus came to the earth and he wanted to institute and install a new kingdom, the kingdom of God, he started to preach this singular message. Repent for the kingdom of God is... Repent for the kingdom of God is... And the word repent is one of the most theologically mismanaged words in scripture. It is not stop doing the bad things you're doing. It is not even turn from your wicked ways. It is primarily metanoia, which means a radical departure from present thinking. That's repent. Shift from how you currently see. Make an adjustment in perspective. If the kingdom of God is going to come to you, if you are going to soar and open the doors to new beginnings, you must see differently. 100%. I don't just know it revelatorily. I know it experientially. That every time that God turned me. Ah, the biggest miracle that can happen to a saint is when the thoughts of God enter your mind. Hey! Shobahangra kosule gadabahashte. 
Say, I'm experiencing that. The thoughts of God are entering into my mind. The wisdom of God is entering into my heart. In the name of Jesus, my blind sides and my blind spots have been enlightened by the wisdom of God. In the name of Jesus, I will not replicate a pattern of unknown errors. Let the light of God shine where there is darkness. My life will not be devoid of divine perspective. My life will not be devo devoid of divine paradigms. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit arranges and arrays the profundities, the deep things, and the mysteries of God unto me. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Because God is so deep, he's unsearchable. That's how scriptures describe him. He's unsearchable in understanding. The riches of his knowledge are too vast to be found out. So the Holy Spirit just goes into the file directory of the endless vastness of God's mind and looks at you, Lady Ada, and says, this is what you need in this season, but you could never know it by yourself. Your humanity is so flawed, you are unable to grasp the thoughts of God concerning you. Yet without the thoughts of God, you can never become. So here he arranges it. In fact, he knows you can't take all God is thinking about you. So he has to condense what you can handle per time. So he arranges it. Okay, she will need this now. Then he presents it to you. He dummy proofs the mind of God. So you can get it. We will walk with the Holy Spirit. Darkness stands in the way of stepping into new beginnings. And we are releasing our faith for new eyes. We're releasing our faith for new ears. We're releasing our faith for new hearts. And that's why our brother John said that the word of life which we heard, which we've seen, which we believed, and then we handled because before you handle the word of life, before you materially experience the mysteries of scripture, you must see it. You must see it, not as logos, but as rema. And that's when you say, Oti, as in that Oti. And then you, you hold it, you steward it. You go through your day meditating on it, laughing to yourself in the Holy Ghost. There are too many sane people in church. This is, this is not how we were trained. We laughed walking the streets of OU. Pison is here. He was not this calm man because he's wearing suit. This man is not a uh, complete jagaban in the spirit. <laughs> we'll be pacing Membo, saying things that even me, I will open my eyes and I'm like, okay, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Africa! Listen to me. Uh? Let's, hello, I want to pass my exam. This exam time, you, are, you tell us that we should come quickly. Let's pray. All of a sudden, we're talking about Africa and Asia. Oh, gosh, no more. Let's go and read. And if you didn't have the rare honors of uh, uh, going to Ife, we have diploma programs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, I'm, I'm joking, please. So that it will not be a case of they will send me out of here. I will, it's just a joke. <laughs> Amen. No more darkness. I want to say to you that sin is not the only thing God has given you victory over. Mm. God, you see, what births the spiritual man? What transitions you from being a carnal man? You know, a carnal man is a saint that is saved but is not free. Is a saint that has a recreated spirit but an unrenewed mind. That's a canal man. He's still leaning to the appetites of the flesh and is unable to manifest the dominion that exists at the realm of the spiritual man. A whole different curriculum. But here's what I want to draw for you. The canal man is at the intersection of the three forces of Satan, sin, and the systems of the world. When a, a believer begins to mature, they start to become aware of the wiles of Satan. 
and they start to seek to walk in greater dominion over sin, but they still lie in bed with the systems of the world. You see, it's so serious that when you're going on Instagram, you wear the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. You will guard your waist with truth. You will have the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And your feet shod in preparation for the gospel of peace. That's how you go to social media. You don't just scroll. You, you don't just stroll there and start to scroll. The entire algorithm is designed to cause you to disbelieve your truth. The truth of the word of God. Well, what you think is a joke is not a joke. That is why it has addictive pleasure. Because it's an agenda. So you're now scrolling. Next thing, by the time you leave, you don't know why you're feeling depressed. As you saw TTA, my very beloved sister, all my sisters are here, and I dearly, dearly love them. Please celebrate uh, Tolu Ajiboye. Maybe you saw what God is doing with her. You leave to the place of prayer, and you, that this is how you come. Lord, I bless you. Faithful are you, O God. Kind and merciful. You have done me well. You have done me well. And you start worshiping. This is how you now come. You, know, you don't know how, but all of a sudden you're just like, Father, we, we choose to trust you. Even if you smite us, we know that our Redeemer leave it. And God is just like, what happened? What, what has happened? It's like you're keeping malice. You don't know why, but the way you come. Or you're now singing dead weight songs. Baby, Lord, sing. Because I just like, God, this level, I don't understand. Was that not Olu entering Prado that we went to secondary school together? You're set free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Emptiness. The absence of God's presence. This again is the seduction of Satan. The seduction of Satan is to surround us with a type of pleasure that we used to enjoy in our previous appetite. He's trying to awaken your taste boards to a civilization you have left. I don't understand how you enjoy binging on Netflix, but you can't listen to Apostle Joshua Selman for six hours. I say, ah, he's too thick. Okay. So I'm not able to. I don't get it. But you can do series. When you sit there, the first, second, third hour, mm, let's be honest. After the first 30 minutes or the first hour, do you start to feel a little, little bitty way? Am I correct? Two hours, you start to feel like, okay, this, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. But you now tell yourself, I, I need to chill. Like, I'm such a hard worker. And God knows even I'm deserving of this. That is not your civilization. You are waking taste boards that will birth emptiness in your life. The presence of God is precious. And you must, in the beginning, it's a new test board. So if you don't make a practice of it, God will not be the source of your highest pleasure. And that's the goal of your life. To not be able to leave. Do, do you get me? To have to go to minister and you're almost like, I'll be back. You want to go and minister the gospel. But it's like they're tearing you away. And ah, to love the Lord with all our hearts, all our minds, all our strength, and all our might. To love the Lord. Don't you desire that? So you have to steal what that. Emptiness is the absence of God's presence. And that's what holds us back from soaring. Because our own soaring is not by the technology of Facebook ads. We do ads, though, but we know where help comes from. Amen. You've taken LinkedIn profile coaching. You've done the photo shoot. But somebody in their house that don't have LinkedIn account are sitting on tables you are not sitting. So Tebariando Frekadosh. Astoparia fraste kladusha. The presence, the presence, the presence. Ah, the presence. The presence is a magnetic influence. 
Let me tell you, ah, Sokobari and Afradosha, there's no city of the world that I've entered that have not been blessed in thousands of dollars. None. None. Even when I quietly enter, I must receive a text. Ma, please, where are you, Lord? I just, I just want to be a blessing. And I, I don't form humble about it. I'll be like, that's great. You are wise. Uh, you know, reach out to my ear. She will get you to know where I am. Yes. I went to the U.S. I became a nuisance. I was on an executive education program at University of Minnesota. So we're in a hostel. I became an absolute nuisance. Peace on. Every day. No kidding. Of the weeks I was there. Adebola, Adebo, Adebo, Kirumi, please come to the Porter's Lodge. I will go. People will be like, are you, are you ordering from Amazon? It was okay the first week. You, you buy a lot. I just, hmm. What can I? Is the presence, magnetic influence. People kept coming to drop gifts. Coming. La compre gado fresh la bar shop prayer. In the beginning, I used to be feeling so funny with the way that people give to me. I'll be like, but he was like, hey, your primary source of income is sovereign wealth. You have to be okay. Kings must give to you. It's, it's presence. You think that we become wealthy by writing books and calculating 5,000 times 2,000 copies. And that's why you're always under pressure. You can't be a blessing. Have you packed the books? How many copies do we sell? You people are not marketing. Is it not a blessing? A powerful book like this. You have to do better. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want to be a case of. Amen. Rise on your feet. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Saka do barados. Ingrada suke payada. We are ready to soar. I want you to ask the Lord tonight, Father. I'm ready for an encounter. Speak to me even when I leave here. The paradigms of the world that are standing in the way of new beginnings. The affinities of the flesh that is not causing me to steward your presence much more. And Father, that, that lack of understanding of your purpose and what you are doing in this season. I'm asking, oh God, that you cause a new beginning to spring forth. Strengthening me by the force of divine life. Lord, I will order my steps according to your word. Start with me all over again. I receive divine instructions concerning my marriage, concerning ministry, concerning my business, concerning my relationships, concerning the work of my hands, concerning what is coming. Father, let this be a trigger for how we begin to retreat in your presence. For what you are doing in 2022 and all across this decade. Pray for your heart. Let my heart be a fertile soil for revelation knowledge. Lord, put a word in the heart of my teachers for me. Put a word in the heart of my prophets for me. Put a word in the heart of my pastors for me. Instruct my heart, oh God. Through simplicity of counsel, teach me. If the Lord has already started showing you what you are supposed to do differently. If a word came for you today, 